Sneezing is one of the most underestimated bodily reactions since you can do it without giving it a second thought. It might come as a surprise to learn that the simple habit of holding in a sneeze can wreak havoc beyond belief on your body. Keep watching to learn what can happen to you if you hold a sneeze and to avoid being the person who says, a sneeze put me in the hospital. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on notifications to join us on the Bright Side of Life. You might have learned in elementary school that when you sneeze, you should cover your mouth to avoid spreading germs. But it's possible that no one ever told you what would happen if you kept the sneeze in. After all, sneezing is supposed to be pretty straightforward, right? Your nose detects an irritant and wants to expel it, so you sneeze. And it's over in a matter of seconds. But there's more to sneezing than meets the eye. There are a lot of strong, irritating substances that can trigger a sneeze. It can be those pesky allergies that have your nose running every spring, being exposed to smoke, getting a sniff of a potent perfume, or getting dust mites up your nose while cleaning your house. All those little particles make contact with the small hairs inside your nose and an electrical signal is then sent to your brain to communicate that a contaminant needs to be pushed out of the nasal passageway. Before you can say Mississippi, your eyes automatically shut, your tongue moves toward the roof of your mouth, and the muscles in your body brace themselves for the expulsion. Interestingly, have you noticed that your eyes close when you sneeze? A common belief is that you can't sneeze with your eyes open. However, according to David Houston, MD, Associate Dean of Texas A&M College of Medicine, some people can definitely sneeze with their eyes open. And open eye sneezing won't make your eyeballs pop out. Even if you can do it, after you learn what happens when you stifle a sneeze, you might not want to experiment too much with this bodily function. A sneeze is a powerful beast that needs to be respected. According to the Cleveland Clinic, Sneezing can send mucus flying at a rate of up to 100 miles per hour. Picture that for a second, and you'll get an idea of the power a sneeze carries. So, when you stifle it, what do you think happens? If you stifle the most violent sneeze, you might imagine imploding in place or getting a stroke, but that only happens in fiction books. What could actually happen is your eardrums and throat suffer significant damage. A sneeze should cost you some water and tissues at most, but several people have had to pay thousands of dollars for a hospital visit. According to a case study published by the British Medical Journal, a 34-year-old man from the United Kingdom tried to stifle a sneeze, and the force from it tore through the soft tissue in his throat. The case report author said that the man had been holding his sneezes in for years, thinking it was unhygienic to sneeze into the atmosphere or into someone's face. But this would be the last time he would stifle a sneeze, having finally learned his lesson. For the man in the UK, the stifled sneeze damaged his pharynx and formed air bubbles in his neck. This condition is called crepitus, and it damaged his neck's soft tissue. The force of the sneeze had to find its way out somehow, so when it discovered that the nose and mouth passages were closed, it went out through the neck and back into the throat. He was at high risk of neck and chest infection. By the time the man was hospitalized, he had lost his voice and couldn't swallow properly. He was put on a feeding tube and discharged within a week, with an unbelievable story to tell. When you try to stifle a forceful sneeze, you can cause damage to your pharynx and neck, lose your voice and have difficulty swallowing, or become completely unable to swallow. In addition, you can damage your eardrums and sinuses. And it's not only about what can happen to your muscles. Something else to consider is that when you stifle a sneeze, you are keeping the contaminant inside your body. Eventually, the contaminant can make its way deeper inside, putting you at risk of infection. Middle ear infections can occur when a sneeze is kept inside and the contaminated mucus travels through the eustachian tubes toward your ears. When it comes to the consequences for your ears, don't just expect an earache or infection. According to Dr. Michael Benninger, an otolaryngologist and chairman of the Head and Neck Institute at the Cleveland Clinic, there have been patients who suffered ruptured eardrums and even cracked ribs from the force of a sneeze. Sneezing properly takes just a bit of thought. It's a good idea to know how to sneeze correctly if you suffer from seasonal allergies, if you are coming down with a cold, or if you are regularly exposed to allergens that set off your sneezing reflex. There are a lot of diseases that are spread by sneezing. The common cold, whooping cough, strep throat, chicken pox, bacterial meningitis, and SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, among many others. 
So if you are a carrier, be a good neighbor by following proper sneezing etiquette. The CDC recommends that you cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when a sneeze comes. Make sure you discard the tissue after one use. Throw it in a trash can where no one can touch it. You might be surprised to learn that if you don't have a tissue on you, you should sneeze into your upper sleeve, not your hands. This might sound strange since the standard has always been to cover your sneeze with your hands. The new guidelines were only established in the last 10 to 15 years, so not a lot of people know about them. Sneezing into your hands will make it more likely that you pass the infection to other people. You'll probably go on to touch doorknobs, press elevator buttons, and put your hands on public areas which other people will be exposed to. The new standard is recommended by the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the American Public Health Association. Even if you use a tissue, always wash your hands afterward. Don't just do a quick rinse. Make sure you wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, really getting into the nooks and crannies, including under your fingernails. There are times when sneezing seems to be the worst thing you can do. When you're in an elevator full of people, when you're preparing food, when you're in a busy movie theater, when you're at the dentist, and while you're reciting Shakespearean lines to a crowded theatre. The upside is, if you have the chance, there are ways you can make yourself sneeze in advance. For some people, genetics can play a role and help them sneeze when they look at a bright light. If you don't know if you can do this, give it a try next time you feel a sneeze is coming. You can also try massaging the bridge of your nose to stimulate the electrical signal that tells your brain to sneeze. Another way is that if you have a tissue, simply wiggle it right under your nose, just close enough that the tissue tip stimulates the hairs inside your nose. That might just do the trick. If you don't get advanced warning, no matter where you are, it's better to sneeze than risk hurting your throat and ears. As they say, better out than in. So next time your body wants to rid itself of irritants, just let it. But make sure you protect others from contacting your germs by covering yourself properly. And protect yourself afterward by washing your hands. Who knew that holding a sneeze could cause so much damage? Let's all learn from this situation and never hold a sneeze again. So tell us, Brightsiders, have you ever tried to hold in a sneeze? Let us know in the comments section. Don't forget to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe to stay on the Bright Side.